Stephen Hawking was a cosmologist who helped uh, us scientists and the world understand how the universe uh, began. Um, he helped understand the history of the uh, universe. Uh, spe spe specifically, um, he helped us uh, realize that the universe began at this, this single point that we call a singularity, an infinitely small point of curvature um, that the Big Bang, which we now uh, believe was the beginning of the universe, actually started from. So that very, very early point in the, universe, in the uh, history of the universe, he helped us, uh, he helped uncover for the entire world. Professor, I heard a soundbite actually played on radio this morning, a soundbite uh, by Stephen Hawking. It said uh, what, he, what he was trying to do with his work was to explain what religion largely was trying to explain. Uh, would you agree with that? Uh, how would you read into that, into that soundbite? This is very true. I mean, one of the things that religion has tried to do is to uh, tackle the question of how uh, we have come into existence, how the universe has come into as existence. And indeed, uh, this was one of uh, Professor Hawking's missions, uh, to do this using the laws of physics, uh, explain this history of the universe using physics. So as an, astrophysic uh, an astrophysicist yourself, how remarkable is Stephen Hawking's body of work, just given the massive challenges he faced physically? Oh, um, enormous. I mean, so if you put his illness aside, then the scientific, his scientific contributions are unparalleled, right? They are just enormous on their own. And then you bring the illness on top of that, that, that uh, you know, um, dehabilitating uh, illness then it just put him at this, uh, you know, entirely uh, different level. I actually had an opportunity uh, to see him lecture once. Uh, I was still an undergraduate then um, uh, in Boston. And one of the remarkable things I walked away, you know, um, after having uh, seen him lecture was just how still he was throughout the lecture. So he didn't seem to twitch a single muscle. And yet he gave this full lecture, of course, coming uh, from his computer, it was pre-recorded, but he also allowed people to ask questions. And then, you know, uh, just using his eyes was able to text back uh, these answers. And it was just uh, incredible uh, to watch this. And I left thinking, this man must just use his mind to only think and do nothing else. So you can imagine how our bodies, you know, regulate our speech, the movements we make. And I was just like, you know, incredible that this man is just using his, all the capacity of his brains to just think and help us understand the world. Yeah. Uh, incredible indeed. Absolutely. Well, before you let you go, uh, Professor, just a, a last comment, and, and it's related to what you've just told us. I mean, given his uh, body of work, it is incredible in itself that Stephen Hawking was actually never awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. Yes. So his work is uh, mostly theoretical, and the Nobel Prize in Physics is typically um, for experimental things that can be um, observed and proven um, in this way. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, and this is the reason that he didn't get the Nobel Prize. However, he's won many, many other uh, prizes uh, that are of, you know, of equal uh, importance and held um, the physics chair at uh, University of Cambridge that was previously held by Newton. Uh, and, you know, uh, many others. So as far as, um, you know, his laureates uh, behind the, the Nobel, you know, uh, prize itself, uh, they are just uh, enormous. All right. Well, thanks very much for taking the time uh, to help us remember this incredible person who was uh, physicist Stephen Hawking. That was astrophysicist Professor Lera Liu.